Welcome to this, the fourth programme on why people find programming hard. My name's Andy Wicks, and in this programme we're going to be looking at how you get started when you want to write a programme. You always start with a problem. So there's something that you'd like to solve. What is it? There's a temptation then, indeed possibly an expectation, that your first step is to hit the keyboard. I've got my problem, I'm going to go and code. Don't. That way lies madness. The keyboard is the last place you want to get to. Let me explain. This is the way most people would learn programming. They'd start with, this is how you get into your IDE, your integrated development environment, which is a flash term for the computer program that helps you write a computer program. So we teach you how to get in. Then we teach you some simple commands and get you used to those. And that's learning by rote. And unfortunately, that cannot work. Oh, it would work fine if... The amount to remember is small, but in programming it isn't. If you have a superb memory and can make sense of seemingly unrelated pieces of information. If you can, you're far brighter than I am. Not that that takes much. And otherwise, for the rest of us, what you need is understanding. You need to be able to understand programming before you start programming. Now that may sound the wrong way round, but stick with me. You'll see what I mean. Unfortunately, we teachers tend to do it the wrong way. Let me tell you the right way. Understanding is easy. You don't have to remember something if you understand it. Oh, you may need to look up the exact terminology but at least you know you need a one of those. Programming is not about vocabulary, the commands that you need to write a language, and it isn't about the syntax, the grammar of writing in a particular language. Programming is all about logic, and how do I break this problem down into steps that a computer will understand? You cannot learn logic. Logic is something that you have, something that you can develop through practice, something that you can improve on as you get more experienced, but you can't learn it. Logic is acquired by trial and error. Notice the and error. In normal schooling, you're told off if you make mistakes. A computer won't care if you make a mistake. It's not bothered whether it falls over or not. If you make mistakes, you have two chances to learn. You not only learn how to do it correctly, you also learn what doesn't work. So don't worry about making errors. A failure to make mistakes is a failure to understand. You only get the understanding when you see where those errors stop you programming. And making mistakes helps you to see what works and what doesn't. Making mistakes is a good thing, not a bad thing. A lot of programming is down to being explicit about what you want. Let's have a look at a particular problem. You've been asked to create a computer program which takes in the scores for the courses you're on this year. It finds their average and then grades you either fail if you got under 50, pass if you got between 50 and 75, or honours if you got over 75. That's the problem. Now we don't hit the keyboard. We start thinking about it. We start worrying about the solution. And there you have to be like a mathematician. Start at both ends. Now that sounds silly, but trust me for a minute. You start by assuming that you know the answer. Do you know the answer? Well, the answer is, yes, you do know the answer, because that's what you're assuming you know. All we have to do is understand the problem. 
So we know that the solution to this problem is that it displays the classification that you achieved with your scores this year. So you want it to say either fail, pass or honours. To get that you have to decide what the classification is. And to get that you have to calculate the average of your scores because the classification depends on that average. And finally, you've got to get those scores in to calculate the average, to decide on the classification, to display the classification. Notice we started at the end, not at the beginning. A common error for most of my students, and for me sometimes, is to try and say, right, where do I start? And it's not where I start that matters, it's where I end. So think about what you want to get out and then work backwards from there. So now we have a plan. This is good. Smiley face. The next step is to decide on what happens in each task. Break the tasks down into their most basic components. And don't worry if you have to change your plan. That's part of the understanding process. Making errors, remember, is part of understanding. Expect to change your plans. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. So let's have a look at step one, where we get the scores in. We need to get the grades. We have to get each grade, so we need a loop. And we have to know how many grades we have to get. So, how do we do that? Well, we have to ask the user, how many grades are you getting this year? So, let's have a look at that in action. How many grades do we have to get? Ask the user. We need to get the grades. Ah, and now we have to get each grade, so a loop. Now we have our steps in a logical sequence. We can now start working on getting this looking something like code. We could have a pretend program. It's called pseudocode in computing, but a pretend program works, where we get the user to input the number of grades by asking them how many grades. Now we know the number of grades, we can do a loop. And we go round this loop the number of grades times. So we input the score asking them enter a score and we go round that loop time and again until we've mopped up all the grades. Now what about step two, calculating the average? Well, maybe we have a problem. Average score is equal to total score divided by the number of grades. But we don't have a total score. So there's an error in our program and it's terrible and the world is going to end. No. Don't panic. We just revisit step one. What we have to do is to add an extra line where we add the score to the total of scores. And to make sure that the total of scores starts out in its correct state of zero, we add another line that says total of scores equals zero you'll see that we've changed our program and it doesn't matter. Nobody has died, the world hasn't ended, the program continues. Now we can go back to step two again, calculate the average. So now we can have average score equals total score divided by number of grades. That's fine now. It's easy, just relax and work backwards. If you have a problem, just rework what you've done a bit until the problem disappears. Try and solve little problems, lots of them, rather than big problems and trying to do all of them and not being able to work it out. So let's decide on a classification. We want the classification to change depending on the average score. This sounds like a case of the ifs. If your grade is this, then, and if your grade is that, then... And that's treatable with modern medicines, but it was fatal in earlier times. 
So, let's have a look. If average score is less than 50, then the classification is fail. This is that pseudocode again. This is where we're putting our thoughts down into pretend computer program. If the average score is between 50 and 75, then the classification is pass. And if the average score is over 75, then the classification is honours. There's nothing particularly clever going on here. We're just writing out the logic that we were given in the scenario. And finally, we display the classification. Well, that one's easy. Just display what it is that you got. So, what do you do? You assume that you know the answer. Don't start at the beginning. Start with the answer you want and work backwards. Failure to plan is planning to fail. So get your ideas straight before you start any coding whatsoever. Now we can go on and code. Now we've got a plan, we can write the computer program. And if you're thinking, ah, Andy's going to show me some computer code, you're right. And I'm going to show you not one bit of computer code, but four. Because the language that we program in is irrelevant. The logic, as you will see, is the same in all four programs. All you have to do is find out how to use your integrated development environment, your program that you use to write the program. You have to look up any code you don't know. Well, that's fine. There's the internet, there are books, there are your friends. And what does all this code look like? Well, let's start with an example. Let's start with Python. As you can see, we've done exactly the same in Python as we did in our plan. We started off by asking the user, how many courses are you taking? We then set the total score to zero and go round a loop, number of courses times, asking them what their score was. As they put in a score, we add that score to the total score. Don't get hung up on the commands that we're using here. It's the logic that matters. We calculate the average as being total score divided by number of courses, and then all we're doing is outputting the a result depending on the average. So if the average is less than 50, you fail with a score of whatever it is the average is. If the average is greater than 50, uh, but less than 75, you pass. If your average is greater than 75, then you get honours. Now that is the logic that we created in our plan. But if we have a look at this Java program, it does exactly the same thing. The words that we're using, the vocabulary, the commands, they're different. The syntax that we use, the grammar of the language, is different. But the logic is exactly the same. We start off by asking the user how many courses they're taking. We then set total score to zero. We then ask the user what their score was in a particular course and add that score to the total score. We then find the average by dividing the total score by the number of courses and then we display a message that says either you failed or you passed or you achieved honours depending on the average score. You'll notice that the logic is exactly the same. And this is true if we go to C++, for example. We start off by asking how many courses you're taking. We then set total score to zero. We go round a loop, asking what the score was for a particular course. We add that score to the total score. We find the average. And then, depending on the average, we display either you failed with a score of, or you passed with a score of, you achieved honours with a score of. The logic, and stop me if this is getting boring, but the logic is exactly the same. And if you are bored, 
Well, you won't like this example either, because it's exactly the same as the others. Now we're working in visualbasic.net, and we start off by asking how many courses are being taken. We set total score to zero. We ask how, what you scored in a particular course. We add the score to the total score. We work out the average. And then we display a message, depending on what your average score was. As you can see, although the words have changed from programming language to programming language, the logic has stayed exactly the same. There is no difference. The logic stays the same. The IDEs change, the vocabulary changes, the syntax changes, but the logic stays the same. And this is what programming really is. Programming is not about learning code. Programming is about being able to find the logic you need to solve a particular problem. That is programming. And if you can find that logic, you are a programmer. Because the rest is just looking things up on the internet, reading a book, asking your teacher, uh, looking over the shoulder of the person next door. Programming is about understanding the logic. Break the problem down. Then turn your logic into code. The computer language is irrelevant. It's only there for the computer. For you, what matters is the logic. So, what are the next steps? Well, get a quick overview of the words used in programming. There is a video of mine on that, if you want to have a look at it. The uh, address of that video is in the uh, overview above. Find a starting language. So Scratch, Python or Java are good languages to start with. And then start writing programs. It's that easy. But don't worry about making mistakes. Mistakes are a good thing.